Hi. Hey. <laughs> Ooh, I like your. Uh, I love your <laughs> your jacket. I love that. It's not bad. I like it too. Yeah. I just got it this morning. Yeah, it gives me a lot of uh, '90s nostalgia. I really, really, yeah. <laughs> I dig that a lot. Um, <laughs> David, I love this movie. I've seen it twice. I, I, this is the type of movie where this sounds so cheesy, but it was sort of like they don't make movies like that anymore. This like big, beautiful, epic sweeping movie i saw it again last night and just bawled my face off um with a group of you know it was just me and a bunch of uh little old ladies at a noon show on uh <laughs> what what is it on a tuesday um and i love that everyone stayed and everyone was crying and it was great and i think you're i think you're amazing at the part so thank you for taking the time to talk to me thank you thank you for having me appreciate yeah. that so I guess something that stuck out to me the second time that I watched it, Maria says Bernardo is always mad. Um, do you think that is true? And how necessary is that sort of attitude for him? Um, I think that's just the best way I've learned to communicate yeah. as a character thing. Mm -hmm. Um he's a fighter he's the best fighter around mm -hmm. and with that comes a mentality of aggression a mentality of defensiveness a mentality of just being a little more territorial than other people would usually be um there's and that's how he's found um you know kind of like a channel to exert his energy is mm -hmm. it through boxing is through that aggression um so is he always angry no but i think she thinks that because or can make that statement because i i seem angry a lot of the times um which could outweigh those moments yeah. of genuine love that i do have um and that's just kind of the balance that bernardo's trying to juggle yeah. Yeah, I do feel like she probably sees a lot of Bernardo's reactions to things and she could probably read it as anger, but really it's coming from a, a defensive place, a loving place, a sort of uh, even almost like a scared place because he's sort of yeah. maybe a little yeah. terrified to see her go out there yeah. in the world. Around. Um, just sort of in general, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> this is so cheesy, but what did sort of West Side Story mean to you as a performer just because it is such an iconic piece of uh you know not just musical theater but also it's a it's a you know a big piece of american cinema and i don't think you've ever done this show before but i was curious what the the musical in general means to you yeah i mean the first time i saw west side story i was i think 13 years old in 2009 and i was mm -hmm. doing billy on Broadway at the time. Mm. So I was able to, to, to sneak in and see one of the West Side Story uh, <laughs> shows that were on at the time. And I remember walking out and I just loved the music, kind of the emotional journey that the music takes you on. I love the characters. I love how closely it resembled um, Romeo and Juliet. Um, and I love Shakespeare. I love, to me, I feel that, I feel I'm a fulfilled actor if I'm doing something that resembles Shakespeare. Um, oh, okay. The, the fact that I could do this role and be in this movie meant so much as me as, you know, that I was so inspired by it and, and so taken back by it. And I realized how rare opportunities like this are. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of to just make the most out of it and really mm -hmm. enjoy the process and learn as much as you can. Um, yeah to me, the epitome of being an artist and being an actor and is, is expressing myself that way. Was Billy Elliot and West Side Story the same season on Broadway? Yeah. That is, that was, a, that's a crazy stack year, revivals and musicals, yeah. Billy Elliot, Next to Normal, West Side Story. I, was sure. yeah. I actually, like, when I realized that, like, Shrek was on Broadway at the same time as Billy Elliot, like, I found, like, there was a I took a screenshot and I tweeted it out about, I was like, oh, 
Bernardo was sitting in front of Officer Krupke, yeah. and like people like freaked out, which I thought yeah. was the uh, you know at least theater Twitter is alive and well, which is that's great. Is, yeah, Brian yeah. and I were talking about that not that long ago. Yeah, we're, we're just saying how crazy the world is and how it's all come like full circle and how we both get yeah. to work this movie together. <laughs> it's that's that's the beautiful thing about this business is that when you're a kid you admire these people um you look up to these people you want to be like these people and then you mm -hmm. grow up you are you are working with these people you are creating art with these people you are making something with the people you admired um yeah. not all fields can you do that and um mm -hmm. to work so closely with people that you admire that's, yeah that's that's so uh I don't know, just thinking about that. That's so in the in the you know theater community from you know everything that I understand, it's such like a giving, circular, serendipitous kind of thing. So when I saw that, I was like, I freaked out a little bit. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um I was curious, I kept thinking the second time I watched the movie, the differences between Bernardo and Riff and how headstrong you both are, and how you know one is trying to make something of himself in a country that he's not from and one feels like things are being stripped away from him and I was curious because they are both leaders do you think that there is anything Bernardo can learn from Riff at all um that's a very good question oh thank you <laughs> I there is a lot to learn from Riff I think Riff understands that him and his boys in the jets are pushed against the corner mm -hmm. um and it's almost that if you fight back you're in the wrong and if you let yourself die from it you're also in the wrong so where do i go you know so i understand his mentality of just he he almost wants to die he almost just is he's truly fearless if you think about it, yeah. um, Riff is truly fearless because he's already dead. Yeah. Um, so, and Bernardo is thinking about the future and what he can do. Um, so I feel like there's there's a really beautiful balance between what Mike Feist did with Riff and what I did with Bernardo, and it it's just it's like polar opposites almost. Yeah. Two opposite kinds of leaders. Mm -hmm um so for me what i think his love and his understanding for the jets and what they're going through and really trying to like build this fantasy for them so that they don't lose all hope when he you know yeah yeah there's something i, I watched a video online about comparing both versions of west side story and the, you know the historical elements of of like what Tony does with the with the screenplay. And it's sort of like this, this brawl between these two groups of people is almost like futile in sort of a way because of what actually happens in New York City and okay. the, the physical space that it gets taken away from everyone there. And it, it sort of makes the story more tragic in a way that um, the way these, you know, everyone is fighting. So I thought that was very interesting too. Um, I want to talk about the the rumble because I want to know how maybe Bernardo views fighting that way because he is a boxer. He he um, is fighting in a completely different fashion um, in the rumble almost. Um, I guess sort of physically about that, like sort of what is his his mental strategy there? Because I was wondering if the if if he is is at all nervous about going into that fight. I think, I think deep down, yes, mm -hmm. but I think he puts on this front and persona that he's yeah. not. For most of the movie, he does that until the very end when he realizes that, you know, killing Riff just about ends it for everybody. For, you know, mm -hmm. I think once Riff dies, it's like a moment of realization that blood has been spilled and someone's got to pay for it and it's going to be me um 
Because there is a second, there is like a split second when Tony's coming towards you. I could totally get what you're saying because when he's coming towards you, it's sort of like you don't like, it's not that you don't put up a fight or anything. You just like watch him come at you. Yeah. It's sort of like what you have did, like, just, yeah. It's so like, oh God. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing more I can do. And it's almost like just accepting and facing the biggest fear, which is not just death, but like leaving behind Anissa and leaving behind Maria and leaving behind my community when they all looked up to me to like help them. They all, yeah. they all, you know, so it's, that moment when Riff dies, it's like, oh, that's it. That's the end of my my love with Anita, my mm -hmm. future having a family with her. That's the end to the sharks. And that's the end to this whole thing. And it was all started because of me. It was all started in my head, in Bernardo's head. He probably thinks it's all his fault at the very end. And that it's a tra it's very tragic for him. <laughs> yeah. Um because it's it's not really anyone's fault. Um, I feel like it's almost like there's a puppet on top and, and the sharks and the jets are fighting each other. And oh, really yeah. the, the enemy is whoever is getting us to fight each other, um, yeah. which is the circ which to me are the circumstances of society. Mm -hmm. So these two groups are being manipulated by society to fight and kill each other. And then at the end, you're kind of like, why, what was the point of all of that? Yeah. Um, kind of you know that divide and conquer when in the end you realize they both sides both the jets and the sharks are kind of put in impossible situations mm -hmm. um, and they take it out on each other out of fear and out of not quite understanding the other side the other culture yeah and it doesn't help that not only are there circumstances which they may not even be aware of every single person you know takes a chance to tell them like you know like you know Krupke and, and Lieutenant Schrank they're like you're worthless like you don't belong anywhere like it's sort of like it's not like it's just like a uh you know there are circumstances that are sort of beyond their control but there are also people sort of driving that into their head every single day so yeah, yeah. okay um I wanted to ask about um <laughs> the performance of America and and your relationship with Anita you two have insane chemistry like that it's like it's sort of like one of those things where you can tell that they're like one of those couples that have that sort of indescribable you know rhythm and and uh chemistry with one another what's that, that they're it makes sense that they're yeah. together yeah. yeah um and i like how you know the scene leading up to america um you know she's telling uh anita's telling maria and bernardo like you know you have to speak english and you know she's she's sort of driving you guys in a different way um that is sort of going against everything and bernardo sort of wants to stand for with a lot of things and and i i just love the dynamic between the two you leading into that song and there's something about the way that you dance in that number, um, there's like a real masculinity to that dance, which I think is, is such a cool thing with like the masculinity of your um, boxing. They're, sort of just talk to me a little bit about that. I'm not really asking a super yeah. precise question. There's just a lot happening there. What you can tell me about that. Yeah, well, I, as far as like the chemistry between Ariana and I, I think, I think we're both passionate people um and our characters are passionate so we kind of sat down and we're like I feel like these two characters would be just very passionate towards each other and not be mm -hmm. afraid to show that um yeah um and not be afraid to play with each other not be afraid to feel like kids around each other or <laughs> get angry or be happy or you know kiss or whatever it is um, make it a playful thing. That's why they're together. That's why even though they have completely different ideologies, they love each other. And that's because they make each other feel really good and comfortable and able to just express themselves naturally. Because once yeah. Bernard out of the door into the street, he puts on a mask, a persona of this tough fighter. And then when he gets home, Anita's the one that can kind of take that apart um, mm -hmm. and make him feel comfortable enough to be a kid 
to be that child that he is. Um, and I think, I think Ariana did such an incredible job. I mean, that's, I, I was so lucky to be able to work with her and, and be with someone who was just so understanding and so, so there for me. Um, so, you know, a lot of the credit goes to Ariana. And then as far as like the dancing, um, I just remember, I, I kind of like the idea of the dancing almost kind of not being so dancey, almost like you just found a boxer who you just showed him some steps and he kind of tries to do those steps and they happen to look good, yeah. you know? <laughs> Like I just wanted a, a level of realism and a level of street and a level of um, just rugged and 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 real and just um, yeah and I and, and and I think it looks decent because I have such a strong balletic foundation. Yeah. I grew up in ballet, so. I feel like it's going to look no matter what thanks to that foundation. And then if I add that kind of boxer street anger, this like personality to it, it and just let it do its thing. I don't have to do anything too crazy, yeah. but um, yeah, I definitely wanted to make it feel real. And I think that's the great thing about this movie is that, you know, when the scene starts and then the song starts and then there's, it just flows so beautifully and it doesn't feel like, oh, the scene is over and the song is starting. Oh, and the, now they're dancing. And yeah. it just happens and escalates to that point. And you don't even know how it got there. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, on the street in America with like kids running around and you're like, how did we get there? Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and then, you know, so I think, I think a lot, I think everyone kind of had that element to it and brought that element of where, you gotta just get lost into the song, into the into the dance, and then lose yourself out of it without noticing such a strong, abrupt difference. Yeah, the way that Steven Spielberg is able to like make uh, the movie move, like I said, that's like the first thing that came to my mouth after the first time I saw it. It was just so um, propulsive, and the way that it 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 sort of. Uh, moves into the music and out of the music and moves from scene to scene it's sort of mind-boggling <laughs> that he uh makes it almost feel like you're dancing along with everyone at the same time um well that's what's yeah that's what's crazy is that I'll, you can see this in most of his movies um is that he balances an element of like fantasy with realism mm -hmm. or there's moments where you get lost in the fantasy whether you're watching jurassic park or et you get lost in the fantasy and then it brings you back into dirty reality yeah. and you're like they're accepting what reality really is and he just balances that so beautifully and i think you can see that staple in the in west side story That's very well. true yeah he sort of takes it to a heightened place and then sort of punches you with an emotion that you're sort of yeah. not expecting that's what i sort of love about a lot of his movies yeah um, I guess one last question before I let you go. Um, I had read or I saw a video that said that Rita Moreno was on set a lot. Um, I was curious if you had uh, an opportunity to spend any time with her, even though like, you know, Bernardo and Valentina do not have really yeah. scenes together. I was curious if you had an opportunity to, um, you know, interact with her, someone who was in the original movie and her experiences, is there something that you could take away from that? Or if you hadn't had a time to talk to her, is there something just like seeing her on set that you can take away from? Yeah, I mean, we I definitely got to spend some time with her. Yeah. Um, and she's just, that woman has a hundred times more energy than <laughs> the an ensemble of West Side Story combined. Yeah. It's crazy. Like she's um, the best. <laughs> yeah really is i don't know how she's in, like not human but she <laughs> has uh, and so much energy and so much passion for everything she's doing mm -hmm. and she's so artistic she's so good at what she does and you can't explain it you just know she is um <laughs> i remember when we were doing the reading and she started doing her scenes and she started singing somewhere like um 
people around her were crying and just, I felt so emotionally touched just from the reading. Uh, when we all gathered to read the script, which Steven Spielberg never does, but people were begging him to do it for this movie. Um, so we did that reading and her performance in that reading was just out of this world. Um, so I, I feel like I learned a lot about through from her what it is to really be an artist and really making the audience feel what you're feeling and being honest and being real with your pain or your happiness or whatever it is. Um, she's a very real artist and that's what I love the most about her. And the best advice she always gives is to just take advantage of the things that make you unique. Don't try to be like anyone else. You have already this thing that's unique. Take advantage of that. And usually what makes us unique is what we hate about ourselves because it doesn't make us conform with the people around us and doesn't make us like everyone else. But in reality, that's what's going to make you stand out are those things that are unique that you've hated all your life <laughs> about yourself because it made you different. But that's exactly what you want to tap into. Um, so she gives great advice. She's an incredible artist. She was an incredible person to be around. Um, yeah, I mean, she's she's amazing. <laughs> there's just like, yeah. there's, you can't really put your finger on it, but she's just an incredible artist and an incredible person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the thing that you don't like about yourself that makes, you know, it's very special. That's a very beautiful thing. I love that. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, David, so much. I I already want to go see the movie again, like 500 more times. It's literally <laughs> just like, it's, and I and I know, I know West Side Story very, very well. I was, I mean, I have a theater background and, and everything like that, but it's just sort of like, this is like what a great movie musical is. Yeah. And a year full of really good movie musicals. This was just like, I was blown away by it. And I was blown away by your performance. So thank you so much for your Thank time. you so much. Thank yeah. you. That makes me so happy. Yeah, this. Yeah. This project was honestly done with so much love from so many people. And I, and I feel like you can feel that when you watch oh, this, yeah. movie, you know, so yeah. it's a really beautiful thing. And, and the fact that you enjoy it and that you went back to see it a couple of times, that's just crazy. Yeah. That's why I'm so inspired by this. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, and it's, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, it was definitely worth the wait since, you know, COVID bumped everything off the schedule last year and it was like I could feel like when I was yeah. getting ready to go see it I was like all right it's time for that movie <laughs> yeah um yeah. all right well uh stay safe right. have a good rest of your day thank you so much yeah holidays Joey thank you so much Thanks.